back to life. That was such a clutch bucket. He has two game winners in a row. Back to back. DP called him Mr. Sports Center in the presser. I almost cracked out laughing. Um, big win. Right. I mean, I don't know how big it is considering UMass had about four guys in scholarship playing, a bunch of walk-ons, but had a big lead, let it go, you know, what happened? That seems to be the theme this year, build up an early lead in the second half, blow it, and then lately, get it back and, and hit a buzzer beater, so. And so Mars sent us to overtime, how'd he do? Uh, he got fouled on a three-point play, which almost went in, that could have been a four-point play potentially, but he hit all three. Uh, Freshman hitting all three of his free throws to take us into OT. I mean, the guy is, a, he's far ahead of what we thought he would be. He's at this far point. ahead, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, Otis, last play of the game to get Boyd the easy layup. DP said in the presser that, you know, even if they score, we're not going to call a timeout. They're probably going to get caught celebrating. We're going to sprint the floor. Five seconds is enough. What happened? Otis sprints the floor, dishes it off to Boyd. Buzzer beater Boyd, yeah. Easy bucket, layup. And now we're at 8-8 eight and eight in the A-10. So this is a huge win for us. Um, With and Richmond up next, and we have their well, number. Well, yeah, well, Richmond's the next home game, but I think right. we have VCU coming up. VCU, that's a big game. Got to win. I mean, at Richmond. So DP said it. We could be fourth in the A10. We want. We want. We don't want to play our first game until Friday of the tournament. So, you know, and, and we've been critical, you know, of DP a couple times. One, most specifically, we're wondering why he keeps going with a small ball lineup to close games out. We actually asked him in the presser, and this is what he had to say. Well, one, you know, we put our better rebounders out there. And, and you know, and that shouldn't be the case, but um, we put our better rebounding team on the floor down the stretch. And so that you can just read into that for, for what it is. Uh, the second thing is um, we, we were back on our heels against the zone. And, and so we had a, a better passing group. You know, um, so the Gonar at the baseline and, and uh, the ability to stretch it, put a little bit better shooters out there. Uh, and we got really hurt on our ball screen defense um, execution, and so we were able to switch uh, every ball screen there last couple minutes of the, of the regulation and, and in overtime, which, you know, they were hurting us um, off the ball screen and the big kid, you know, rolling to the rim. So. Those are the main things, you know. Uh, it, you know when Jair's rebound like he did, and and uh, things like that. Um, so it, that that was the thing, and you know some days, you know it might be a different lineup. A lot of it's just on who's playing well for us, and a lot of it, you know, is who's playing well for you know for the other team. And I know you don't plan too far ahead of uh, the schedule, but did you expect to see this much zone? Um, is this is it different than previous years in the A10? It just feels like we're seeing the two three a lot. Well, you know, part of it is uh, I would say is that um, you know a couple things. Um, one is at times against man to man. You know, we've we've made some pretty good progress and we've we've become a you know a better uh, offensive team against man to man. Um, you know, to some degree tonight with UMass, I mean, they were really undermanned, so there, there was a sense of desperation. And sometimes uh, guys, um, you know, get a little tight when you get a lead. So, no, I mean, and we, we saw a, a good amount, like early in the year, we saw a decent amount, like it was Davidson and maybe one of the team, and like we really attacked it and shot the ball really, really well. Um, so, you know, everyone will do whatever they got to do and you know again um, you know some people zone no matter what some people zone as a matter of like here's what we got to do and some people aren't going to zone at all so and it's, it's it's kind of a mix you know within the league Jair um. I mean the scoring was pretty even we got Justin Kyer with 14 we got Gonar hitting 18 Otis 22 but really today we were super impressed with our guy Ayer Gray. Grayer's back, folks. I think uh, he alluded to it in the presser. There may have been a little bit of an injury there, but um, just seeing that he put up a double-double, 18 and 10, uh, five of eight from three, his stroke looked sweet. Uh, here's what he had to say to Brian about uh, sort of regaining that confidence. It's Brian to buy George. 
here with the man, Ayer Grayer. Talk to us a little bit about, you know, your performance today. I think you went five for eight from three. Were you feeling it out there? Yeah, I, I was real confident in my shot. Felt good, felt good in warm-ups. I've uh, been practicing a lot, getting a lot of shots up. Yeah. Try to get over this little, this little slump that I've been in. And I just felt good shooting out there. And Mason Nation has been kind of worried about your injury. Can you talk to us a little bit about, you know, how are you feeling? Um, you know, have you been playing through injury a little bit? Yeah, I've been kind of playing through a little bit of injury, but uh, just trying to just trying to block that out and just play hard every second I'm on the floor is really what I'm trying to focus on, you know, like just really just not even thinking about that at all, not trying to let that get into my momentum at all. And then, you know, EBA was pretty live today. What can you say, like, what does it do when, you know, when the crowd comes out and they're cheering on the squad? Does it help you guys? Yes, that really helps us, like, especially down the stretch. That brings a lot of energy to us. It gets the defense, I mean, the uh, opponents, like, rattled on the free throw line. I love when, like, the crowd is really into it. You're going to get just, your free Chick-fil-A? Yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks so much for hopping on the interview. We'll see you soon. All right, thank yeah. you. All right, thanks, bud. I mean, if you're worried about his injury, he's not. Yeah. Straight up said, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm coming out trying to win games. And, and he adds a whole new dimension to our team. He gives us some more depth at the three-point line. I mean, I, I mean, five I, for eight? Yeah. I it's mean, you were taking that every day. I, ideally, I want him shooting threes more than anybody on the team. I mean, he's right. just prolific from three. But who do we have next? B we, we got VCU. VCU. VC who? VCU. VCU. Right. We need a win. And by the way, and we don't know the outcome right now, but VCU is playing St. Bonaventure tonight. They have a chance of being eight and eight. This game could decide, uh, you know, positioning for the A-10 tournament. We could be hitting that fourth seed if uh, VCU loses tonight. So. And speaking of the A-10 tournament, it's coming up quickly. Yeah. And your boys from By George and Giant Killer, we will be there. We got our biggest team yet. Ron behind the camera, who you can't see, but I'll do a little. Doing our slip. camera man what's yeah. up so you know he will be there um and uh pd buckets covering the a10 yeah. will be at every single game guys it's been a roller coaster ride all season long why quit now why i don't know <laughs> stay tuned we're out